If I'm going to be building Mario Karts, then we should all be looking the Mario part. Well, they're going to need some upgrades and modifications. Speed isn't your friend in this game. Oh, sh**. Wow! <laughs> Let's go. This video has been sponsored by KiwiCo. The future of play is engaging, enriching, and seriously fun. I am a huge Mario Kart fan, and with the release of the new Nintendo Switch OLED, I think this is the perfect time to bring that ultimate video game series to life. And stick around to hear about our Nintendo Switch OLED giveaway. The first thing we're going to need is some carts. I went ahead and bought these guys online. They've got a .3 horsepower motor, a 40 volt battery, and one wheel drive. So how are we going to turn these go-karts into Mario Karts? Well, they're going to need some upgrades and modifications. Out of the box, these things are somewhat quick, but we want very quick. So I'm going to pull the motor out and put in a bigger one. And then, for good measure, I'm going to throw another one in on the other side. And I think we have everything we need for this at the old shop. This place has uh, really changed in the last two years. For instance, it's got a giant projector screen in here now. The new Hacksmith Cinemas feature luxurious seating, a 20-foot screen, and Dolby Atmos 5.2.2 surround sound, perfect for catching up on all the latest Hacksmith videos, including our Hacklorian short film, only on YouTube. Oh, we still got the sleeping pot up there, the super sketchy mezzanine, uh, we've got the wall of shame with a bunch of blown up coil gun parts, and lightsaber motor controller, other motor controller, the old grinding bench which has probably seen less grinding as of late, and apparently a hot tub. <laughs> the Hacksmith Resort lets you kick back and relax in a state-of-the-art jacuzzi hot tub, let your troubles melt away, exclusively available for members of the Hacksmith Resort. I'm getting garage envy. <laughs> All right, let's find those motors. Those are the motors. They're a little tied up at the moment, but let's hit the road. These are mounted from the top. We want this thing to be faster. To that end, we're gonna pull out the rear wheels and replace them with better motors. We're gonna pull out the speed controller, replace it with better speed controller. Pull out the battery and replace it with a better battery. And when you turn it on, we're gonna get rid of that. Everything in here that isn't bolted down has to go. And actually, everything that's bolted down also has to go. These are our new motors. We need to install them in the spot where the old motor and the old rear wheel were. These are 350 watt motors. Our old motors were 250 watts. We're also adding a second one, so that's a total of about one horsepower, considering we're going to be running these things a lot harder than they're really designed for. These are the new motor controllers. They go up to 80 volts, 33 amps, We've got the connectors on, let's install the speed controllers. Now that the motor controllers are bolted down, we have to attach all of the controls. Currently this cart's only designed to send a signal to a single motor control. Crimping is the process of attaching pins to the ends of wires by mechanically deforming the pin. That's going to let us make up the connectors that we need in order to connect the throttle to both drivers. I'm adding a button to the steering wheel right here that'll engage the electronic brake instead of just having used the mechanical handbrake. To power the modified go-kart, we're going to be using these Lafelli yard tool batteries that they gifted us last year when we were doing the last drift trike extravaganza. And these are going to let us do quick changes for pit stops when we run the batteries dead. Alright, that does it for one of the carts. Let's see if this actually made a difference. I'm going to be driving the souped up super go-kart, and Chris T here is going to be driving the stock go-kart. This go-kart is sponsored by Hacksmith Thought Store. Get all your go-kart apparel at Hacksmith Thought Store. Let's drag race. Bring it on.
He's cheating. Let's go! Best. Ooh, best. Ooh, best. Best. <laughs> All right, those modifications definitely worked. My cart was way faster. I'm gonna make those same modifications to Chris's cart. Thanks, man, thought store! We got shirt, we got hats, we got water bottles, we got everything. But we all know Mario Kart isn't just about speed. I think I need a refresher, so let's go pick an opponent. All right, let's do this. Dylan here is Hacksmith Industries resident Mario Kart expert, and he's agreed to show me the ropes. Ready to go? Let's do this. When you play this enough, you can do this with your eyes closed. Aw, oh, you son of a bitch, you just took my music box. Indeed. Not cool. If only I had a blue shell. Well, you don't, you have the music box. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, come on. Aw, oh, come on. Oh, Str oh, str oh, strong oh, to the finish, no. right? Not strong, strong to, to the, the finish. finish. Not strong to the finish. Speed isn't your friend in this game. Speed can be your friend, but you need how to you need to know how to use it, and you need a cart that, or a bike that you're going to be able to stay stable with. The key to winning this game is always going to be the red shells. The red shells are your key to winning it, especially if you have three. You just have to learn how to time them right. Oh, I'm way behind here. Not good. Because the key is also, Charles, is that when you're way behind, you don't want to just save on to any of your stuff. You want to get rid of it because you're looking for those red shells. The red shells are going to be the only way that you're going to have the ability to catch up. That or a blue shell because you need to slow me down when I'm not in your view. Yeah. I think the big takeaway is that our cart needs power-ups. A lot of people watch our content and are blown away by the things my team can build. Well, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I didn't just get out of bed one day and say, let's build a Captain America electromagnet shield. And Bogdan didn't just watch Aliens and decide to build a giant power loader. In fact, he still hasn't even seen the movie. All of these massive projects are the culmination of years and years of continued learning. Sometimes when you're small, it's easier to think big. And ever since I was a kid, I looked at things and I wondered, could I build that? I started off small and simple, mastering the concepts which allowed me and my projects to grow. But the question is, where can you start? KiwiCo creates hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. They believe that the small lessons today can mean big, world-changing ideas tomorrow. They will send you a monthly crate that comes with all the supplies needed, detailed kid-friendly instructions, plus an educational magazine for further learning. With eight subscription lines available, each catering to a different age group and skill set, there's something for everyone. I may not have kids myself, but after completing a few of these kits, I can't think of a better way to get kids started in making things. And who knows, maybe someday you can build your very own lightsaber or giant mech. Check out kiwico.com slash hacksmith50 for 50% off your first crate, any crate. Just click the link in the description below, plus you'll be helping support the channel. The main ways to get power-ups in Mario Kart are from picking up item boxes and hitting boost tracks. There's a whole bunch of different items, most of which hurt other people. And as much as I like hurting other people, we're going to focus on boosts for now. We can't exactly go about having magical floating item boxes on the track, but what we can do is have specifically marked portions of track that we can drive over to trigger a boost or an item pickup. Here's how this is going to work. I have this color sensor that I'm going to attach to the underside of the cart. That color sensor is going to get read by this microcontroller. If the color sensor picks up on a distinct color, that's either going to be a boost or an item pickup. The colors we chose were yellow for an item pickup and red for a speed boost. So if we hit a yellow item, we get the fantastic little item scrolling by on the display, and eventually we wind up with our item. We decide we want to use that, we hit the button, and we get boost that's shown out by this bar at the bottom of the screen. If we then hit a red speed boost patch on the road, it just gives us a half second of boost. If we hit another yellow patch, we might get the super mushroom. That gives us 10 shots of 250 milliseconds of boost. The star power, that gives us five seconds of boost. And if you hit it again, you might get the third item, the normal mushroom, which gives you 500 milliseconds of boost as though you hit a boost pad on the floor. 
If you want to see the full schematic diagram, make sure to check out the project on Maker.io. Link in the description below. Off camera, I went and soldered up this circuit board that has the microcontroller and connectors for all the other parts we need. Now we just need to throw that on into the cart and we're off to the races. Now that the mechanical upgrades and power-ups are in place, the only thing missing is aesthetics. We want this thing to look like a Mario Kart. There have been 14 different games since Super Mario Kart for SNES in 1992. Obviously, the design has changed somewhat. So looking online here, uh, it seems like there's really one most popular and iconic design, which is this one. This should be pretty easy to replicate. It just has a cowling over the front steering column, two side pods, and a front fender. We should be able to 3D print all those parts, vinyl wrap them to get the color, and slap one of these on there, uh, as a Hacksmith logo instead of the Mario Kart logo. Let's see if anybody has already made a design of this. This is great! Someone's already done all the hard work for us. For four bucks, we can get the STL, scale it up, and get it printed. It's probably a good time to check on how our 3D prints are doing. So, we're 29 hours into this print. And we're only about halfway done. But it's actually looking... Magnificent. I can't believe it's working this well. Now you might be wondering, how do 3D printers work? Well, here's a brief rundown. We start by taking our 3D model and importing it into a piece of software called a slicer. That slicer takes our 3D model and decomposes it into a bunch of short instructions that this robot right here, called the 3D printer, can follow. The machine follows those instructions and takes this filament, which is a thin strand of plastic, as the filament is extruded through the nozzle, it gets pushed into layers upon layers upon layers. 0.2 millimeters at a time in this case. And as those slowly accumulate, it builds up the entire model that we put into the slicer in the first place. In this case, it's going to keep doing that for about 56 hours straight, burning through 800 grams of filament for each one of these. And we're going to wind up with a part about yay big. Now 56 hours may sound like a long time, but it would take way longer if the slicer wasn't smart enough to make it kind of hollow. You see, if you look in the top here, we have this honeycomb pattern. If we just printed a solid block of plastic, well, first of all, there wouldn't be enough material on a reel this size to fill the whole thing. And second of all, it would have to paint that entire area with a 0.4 millimeter wide brush every 0.2 millimeters, and that would take, eh, about forever. Luckily, all it has to do is just make a stripe every inch or so as it goes across, and then it can go up to the next level. That's called infill. These are looking great, so let's just not touch it for the next 24 hours, and they should turn out fine. These prints, both finished, and they look fantastic. These are gonna form the front bumper of our Mario Kart. We have a whole bunch of holes along this front edge, that we can get the two halves to line up exactly. In form, this looks like a Mario Kart bumper, but the color could use some work. So we're gonna need to paint it and then apply some vinyls so that it looks perfect. All right, let's paint this thing. Now for the big one. All right, paint's dry, and they look great. Now let's hand them over to our vinyl expert.
Okay, these guys turned out great. Now we just gotta bolt them on and we'll have ourselves some Mario Karts. With the release of the new Nintendo Switch OLED, we here at Hacksmith Industries are super excited to announce that we're going to be giving away one OLED Switch to a lucky Hacksmith fan. All you have to do to enter is go to the contest page over on hacksmith.store. And while you're there, you must check out all the newest merch. Look at this. We got lab coats. Links down in the description below. All right, James, we finally got the boost system working on the go-karts. Are you ready to give it a test drive? I was born ready. Let's go. James, see that red square there? I want you to drive right over it. All right. <laughs> That's freaking awesome! <laughs> so the red squares are speed boosts. What about the yellow square? Well, the yellow square gives you a power up. Ooh. All right. Oh, I got a star! Oh, shit. Good. Well, that worked perfectly. <laughs> I'm really glad I took my shoes off. They absorb the impact much better without shoes. Well, James, now that you know how they work, what do you say we just take them for a rip? Let's go! Wow! <laughs> boost, boost. Yes! <laughs> huh. Where are you, Charles? Spun out! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's a bit slippery around that corner. Oh, 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 oh. That was close. <laughs> These boosts are dangerous. That's my phone! Oh my god! My phone got stuck between the wheel. Man, my phone got stuck between the wheel. I was braking using my phone. Charles, I found a replacement brake pad. Oh no. My phone slipped out of my pocket and landed in between the wheel and was actually braking. All right, these things work fantastic. And we learned that cell phones can be used as brake pads, which is super handy but I can't wait for the Hacksmith Cup. Once we have four of these made, it's gonna be crazy. Oh, it's gonna be Mario Kart madness. Awesome work with this, Charles. I can't wait to see the next two and get racing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bye. Hey, get back here. Well guys, there you have it. Mario Kart in real life. I am so pleased with how this turned out and I hope you had as much fun with this as we did. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when Mario Kart Part 2 comes out and we do our Grand Prix for the Hacksmith Cup at Pursuit OCR. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for your chance to win the OLED Switch giveaway. And also, don't forget to check out the merch at hacksmith.store for all the latest and greatest Hacksmith apparel. And for all things behind the scenes, go subscribe to Hacksmith Vlogs. Also, if you like the music in this week's Make It Real, be sure to check out Noteblock Remixes on YouTube for weekly video game music remixes, as well as original game compositions. Thank you all for watching, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.